I have some experience. And, 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 and we, and, and we want to tell you what we look for as a serial entrepreneur and as a funder uh, under the topic capturing the attention of funders. So, so, so funders are different people. Uh, they might not be innovators themselves, but they have the money. And we think differently. So we are trying to share with you how we think so that when you are coming to us or you are coming even to Potras, you understand uh, you know, how people that are releasing money think. Because it's different. And the key thing that I want you to see is, this has been talked about, but as a way of just breezing through that neighborhood, uh, creativity, thinking, which we have been taught very eloquently, uh, they will lead to the innovation. But the purpose of innovation is not just to innovate. It is to create, is to go into entrepreneurship. While you are helping people have something which is useful and af affect their lives, you also want to eat. Because you don't just want to innovate and be broke. Uh, and and let's, let's be honest. When people say, I always ask people when I give lectures sometimes at the medical school and say, why are you in medical school? And all the people say, no, because it's a calling. Oh, because I want to help people. I said, no, you, you are in medical school because you want to make money. Come on, let's just cut the chase. You are doing, you are here, you want to innovate. Yes, you are going to use the innovation to make money, but money is there. It's there. So you need to understand that as, as funders, we are funding things that make money. We are not Father Christmas. We are not just parceling out money. We want things that make money, that protect us, that protect our money. So I will not go into the uh, innovation that has been dealt with. But one of the things that we saw when we were doing is that there are people that are bringing innovations, which they are calling innovations, but they are just first in Zimbabwe. So should we call that an innovation? If you are bringing an Uber and say Zimba or Ozupu, you know, it's, we are not quite sure whether we should call it an innovation. You know, at least when you are saying this is not an innovation, this is a copy, but it's the first in Zimbabwe. Let's call it what it is. You know, the only innovation there is the name because everything else is already done. In fact, some of your innovations are worse than what is already out there. And then you are asking us to fund things that are substandard to what is already the status quo. That cannot be. So if your innovation, if you are if you are innovating an Uber, it must be better than Uber. The people who are running Uber must be hunting for you and say, we want to buy your innovation because if you connect it to what we already have, it will make it better. Know that if we buy what you have, we will become a substandard product. So we need to look at that. So I'm not going to go into that. And one of the things that I want to say is, at some point, everybody's creative. We all, you know played with the mud we all played the you know those games as kids and kids are so innovative when i look at my little son at the age of four the guy is creative he can play with anything he can go anywhere and what and and and, and 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 what we are saying is this guy will just come to me and say daddy i want this 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 then i'll say what's this guy he, everything is possible so there's an age when everything was possible so all of us we can be innovative. The only thing is that through our school systems, which I'm not going to talk about today, we somehow shut our creativity and we became job oriented. So we are just, we are in colleges to, to become, that's why you are shocked that a doctor is talking about business because to you a doctor should be looking at your mouth and giving you injections and that's not what I do. <laughs> so you are shocked, what is this guy doing? Because I decided not to close my mind. I decided, not, uh, I decided my future and my destiny not to be, to be determined by a certificate that I hang on the wall. I decided to live my dream. I decided to live my passion. I decided to live with the innovations of the who I am and my destiny. And that's how I'm going I'm to do it. And I'm here because I enjoy what I do. Even if I don't get paid. I still enjoy 
what I do. In fact, I run in business and entrepreneurship programs in Harare, one of the biggest with over 300 people attending every last Friday. And I do them for free. Why do I do that? Passion. Passion. So, now, let's, let's go into what funders are looking for. What are we looking for? What, is there a business case to your innovation? Is there a business case? Because, we, you, you know, you can just innovate. You can create a shoe that is pointing the other side. You know, you can, you can innovate anything. But is there a business case? Is there a market? How big is the market? We don't want a market. This has been said. How big is the market? And does that market have the money? Because you can have an innovation for a market which is broke. And I'm not interested. Ah, you know, I want to help uh, the beggars so that they can beg faster, you know, with this app, you know, and, and you know, they can actually do all. Okay, but, but how, how will I make money? Okay, you are helping the beggars to beg efficiently. But how will I make money? Is there money in this market? So you have to think. I like what you said. You have to think. You have to pull. You have to think through. And I'm also looking. If I come into, if, if I found this innovation, how quickly will I make money? How, how, how far am I from making money? You know? What is my ROI? You know, the shorter, the sweeter, the better. Don't tell me I will start making money uh, in, 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 uh, in 2030. Ah, uh, listen, guys, this is Zimbabwe. I can't wait that long after all Potras wants that loan to be paid in 42 months. So we need to know. We also need to know how do I get paid and what po at what point do I get paid. I want to know the, the marketing plan. I want to know how you, what mediums are you going to use to market. Uh, and, and those mediums, are they targeting the right people, the market that you say is there? So you have to tell me the segmentations in that market. And, and how are you going to approach every segment? So which means you must have done a proper marketing plan and that's where if you are just an innovator full of ICT in your head and you're not a marketer, you need a marketer on your team. Because even though you might have a brilliant idea, if it's not well marketed, you know what? People are making money with well marketed average ideas. And some people are not making money with good ideas which are not well marketed. Marketing and sales matters. In fact, that's the only thing that brings in money. So as an entrepreneur and as a funder, I'm looking at how you are marketing what you are, you are doing. How is it? How are you going to market? How are you going to hit that market? How, when, how efficient? And what is the conversion rate in that market when we hit them that hard? And when I'm looking at those proposals, I want to see that coming out clearly. Because that is telling me this is the activity which will make you in, go in front of the people that are going to use your innovation. And we want to see how, how fast, how good, and, and, and you close those people. Now, when I say close in Zimbabwe, it seems, you know, in selling, closing is like you get paid, okay? Not kufara. <laughs> All right, so we, we need to see which, which, which segments, which segments. So you, you've got an innovation to help Vanagogo. And you say, you know what, so I want to use uh, cloud, what, what, uh, I want to I, I, I advertise on, on, on Insta Instagram. Who is using Instagram? What is the age profile? Have you looked at the social medias in Zimbabwe in their categories? Because that data is out there. Who, who is using what? Which age? You can tell somebody who, whose age they are by their Email, if they're still using Yahoo, you know when they were born. <laughs> but if your market is the Yahoo guys, you have to target them. So we want to know. I want to know. If, before I put my money, I want to know how you're going to target and you're going to reach those people who, are, who, who has your money. Because there's a question that I always ask as an entrepreneur. Who has my money? And when I know who has my money, how do I get to the person with my money? 
And that's marketing. So there must be a precise plan. And most of you, your proposals, you had no plan. I will just, I will go on social media. That's not a plan. I will go on social media and advertise and we'll get people. People don't just come. Do you know how many people are advertising on social media? Do you know how many people are putting things on their status? You are competing with, with millions, billions. Do you know how many, the proportion of people that are using internet in Zimbabwe? So we want to see that. We want to know that. We want to know whether you know your competition. Because you, guys, you will say this innovation is new and there is no competition. Who told you there is no competition? Just because something is new, there is always competition. Before your innovation was, people were already doing something else and that's your competition. Because people are not just going to switch. Just because something new has come. If you create a new way of cooking sadza, it does not mean that everybody who is going to stop cooking sadza because you have created it. People are going to switch. They don't just switch just like that. So there's always competition. What are people already doing? We want to know whether you understand your competition. Because if you don't know your competition, your competition will swallow you, it will eat you. So you better understand them. And not, o- not only to identify, no, there are two players. We want to we wanna know, go inside there. Go, go undercover. The other time when I was opening a certain hospital, they didn't allow me to go in there. I pretended to be a patient. I paid my money. While I was in there, I was playing undercover. Taking photos and tended of instruments. Da, 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 because they didn't let me then. I, I, had, to, I had to improvise. And know my competition. I wanted to know what's in there, so I made sure I went in there. I want to buy and actually, yeah, Okay, let's leave that part out. But you have to be, you have to be innovative in knowing your competition. And listen, your competition is not going to sit with you bringing competition to them. Guess what your competition wants to do to you? Your competition wants to crush you. If, if, if I'm already here, why should I? Why, why would I let somebody who is innovative to come and destroy my business? I want to destroy them before they destroy me. So I'm nice to you to destroy you. I can even buy you to shut you. Know your competition. Say to your neighbor, know your competition. Ah, some of you are saying, ah. Ah, innovation, ah, I thought it was easy. <laughs> ah, no, ah, ah, no, money doesn't just come easily. Big money doesn't just come easily. A dollar, a dollar can, but big money doesn't just come. But when it comes, it changes your life. I want to know at what stage is the idea. Some of you, you bring proposal that are at ideation stage. It's just a thought. Uh, it would have been nice to have an app that knows when it's raining so that it can turn, send people that are at school that it's about to rain so that the children can know at what time to, to go to school when it is not raining. It's an app. It's just an idea and you write a proposal. What do you want me, a founder, to do with an idea? Everybody has got idea. Everybody has got ideas. So, and the thing is this. If it's a good idea, if I come and find you at an idea, I will own that idea. If I come and find you at an idea stage, I will own 80%, 90% of that business. So, what what I suggest to you is develop it, develop the idea, have some trials, if you are coming, come at a, at, at a prototype 
or you've already left the prototype stage and your market ready for distribution and expansion. So we are coming and say, listen, I've tried this. It works. This is the prototype. You can come and see it. Da, 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 da. All I need is $1 million for me to expand it and to give it. Da, 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 da. And we know the market is there. And we are, we, I've tried the price. The price I, I tried at 15 didn't work. I tried at 5 da, 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 da. You've, you, you have tried everything. So at prototype of marketing, I'm interested. At idea level, your idea must be very good. But when I find it, it from an idea, my stake will be higher. Well, not portraits, but my boys, it's a loan, but I'm just talking about funders, man. But I'm a fund. <laughs> you know? So I'm, I'm trying to help you develop. Don't come with premature. A baby born before its time, even though we might celebrate, that baby is going to give us trouble. Don't deliver a baby. If a baby is delivered before its time, it's a miscarriage. Nobody celebrates. People are crying. But delivery took place. Don't be too quick. Take your time. If you miss this call, another call is coming. Develop. But don't take forever to develop. Because this is what I say to people with ideas. When an idea drops on you, it does not drop to one person. Ideas drop in a multifarious kind of way. It drops on people with distribution. And some way, if somebody has to catch it from the environment or from the atmosphere. So it never drops on one person. So if you wait, that's when you say, ah, oh, that's my idea. No, 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 it's not. It was an idea released for the earth for that time. It goes to several people in Africa has been missing ideas. Why all ideas in, in the UK, uh, in, in Silicon Valley or, or China? No, 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 no. They've, the same ideas released in those valleys have also been released in Africa. But we have been too busy doing stupid things and not focusing. So we also need to bring speed when you've got an idea. And that will give me, us to the next thing that I'm going to talk about. I want to know your commitment level. Most of you, your ideas, you deal you with your ideas at a hobby level. I'm not interested with somebody. I will not fund somebody who wants to use my money to fund a hobby. I'm looking for people that are full-time. I'm not interested in part-time people, part-time committed people, hobby time committed people. I want people that are full-time. Say full-time. Are you full-time? If you are full-time, then you must be giving at least 60 hours to your project, to your idea. I like it when you say, I ah, know I work to this, but uh, in, in the night, I want to know how much you're spending in the night with the idea. Don't tell me you're giving that idea one hour and you're telling me you are committed to that idea and you want me to fund a one-hour committed person. I'm not going to do that. I want, I want you to say, after work, I finish at 4, I'm awake, I'm working on this thing until 12. Then we are talking, you are giving as much time to this idea as much you are doing to the work that is make you get those peanuts. Because if you, if you believe that this idea is going to make you rich, then we must see it in the level of commitment. And how do I know commitment? It is the hours that you put in the idea, developing it, increasing it, researching it, and doing things properly. How committed are you? Money follows the committed. So most people are just dreamers. Most people are just dreamers. They just dream. Oh, I wish. Listen, life is not, is not a dream. It is reality. When you have dreamt, you wake up and build that dream. We are building dreams. We are building. We are building this thing. And you must show the commitment the resolve, when you are sick, can you still come and do what you need to do? Nothing should hold you back. No one should hold you back. You must be utterly committed, totally committed. Whether it's raining, whether it's not, your idea comes first. So most people are just hobbies. We can't find hobbies. Because hobbies never make money. If you've got a hobby, you're going to know butter fish. You will not be a fish. You, you cannot compete with lake harvest. 
And you want us to fund that? No. Business model. Here's the question. Where is the money? I read through hundreds, hundreds of, 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 of your proposal, guys. And my question was, where is the money? I didn't see the money. I didn't see it. Uh, I'm, I'm creating an app uh, in agriculture so that when we put it in the soil, it will tell us the pH, da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, that's a good, that's a brilliant, we are in an agri-revolution in Zimbabwe. That's good, but where is the money? How will the people pay? And there's no payment system link. There's no a point where people pay. How will, you know, are you a social enterprise? Then go into the NG world. We are entrepreneurs. We are in this for the money. We bring value to the marketplace. So for my value, I'm paid money. Simple. So I, I, with, with some of the ideas, I can't see the money. Lots of pages. Good ideas. People will line up degrees more than a thermometer. I did this, this, that, 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 I did this, I went for this innovation, that, 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 that certificate, that, 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 that. Where is the At what point do I get my money? At what point do we start making money? How do we pay? How do those people pay? So that needs to come out. It needs to come out clearly. If you do not know that, then you need somebody who has got an idea on where the money can get paid or where people can start paying. So that's why you need to build a team. So one, one thing that I've seen is a one-man band is going to be difficult because you don't have all the skills. I don't have law skills, so I will borrow the lawyer. When I, when I bring the lawyer on my team, I have hired her mind to be on my team. So we will have a law mind. So we will need somebody who will come with the money idea and say, where, how do we charge for this thing? At, at what point do we charge? So you need that. The next thing that we talk about is valuation. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, an idea without money is dead. You will get buried with your idea. Most people are dead in the coffins and they are in the cemetery with their idea, with their books, because they did not have money to bring it out. Most of us, we come from poor backgrounds. We don't have any money. And even though even we might have had money, but after this week, most of us don't have money. Again, so an idea without money is useless. It's worthless. And, and why am I saying that? Your idea, if it does not get funding, it will just remain an idea. Because if you want one million, nobody's going to give you one million for 0.5%. This is my children's inheritance. This is my sweat, and you want me to give it to you for an idea, for a thought that came into your mind, and you want to give me nothing. That cannot be, ladies and gentlemen. So I then say, it's better to have half of an elephant than 100% of a rat. Most of you, you would rather die with your rat. It's 100% mine, and it's going nowhere. Instead of uh, unleashing the strength of partnerships and funding, where you become... 50% uh, of a rate. What? Who is better? Most of my businesses, I know, I, I accept my consultancy business, I don't run it on my own. I mean, into partnerships. Because partnerships work. Obviously, there's, there are legalities that you need to sort out. But most of you, you are, you are so in love with your idea, you want to keep it 100%, and you remain so small. Hey, and come, Papa, and come, Papa, my idea is worth one million. No, your idea is worth nothing. It's not generating any money. It's got no revenue. It's got no nothing. It's in your head. You need my one million to bring it, or you need my hundred thousand, you need my fifty thousand to bring it to life. For me to bring it to life, you must pay me something that makes me happy. I know you don't want to hear this, but we are telling you. We are the ones with the money. We are telling you what we want. So if I don't invest in your company, I'm still okay. 
I'm still living in my mansion. I'm still flying. I'm still doing whatever I want. And you are still walking with your idea. <laughs> so, so, we are not greedy. Outside the lawn, other funding models, you, people will look at 40, 50. We can, you can put what we call clawback clauses in there and say, listen, uh, if I put this amount of money, if I put 100,000 into this, when this thing starts making money, when I get my money back, I can reduce my shareholding from this to this. Those are called clawbacks. So be innovative in the business. So you must also have some business mind. So while you are busy coding, we are urging you to also educate yourself in the business thinking. Because if you don't, you'll be a good coder and, and, and it's the people with the business mind that will make the money. So you need to educate yourself. And these things are not taught in schools. I'm a medical doctor. There was no business school. I had to read 2,000 books on business on my own. I had to attend business seminars on my own. I don't even have an MBA. How in the world am I talking what I'm talking and knowing all these things that I know? Because I read, ladies and gentlemen, I educate myself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to educate yourself above the coding. You have to educate yourself in business and entrepreneurship. And this is what will take this country out of what it's doing. That's why we believe that you guys are the future of this nation. If you are going to take this nation and employ all the people that are unemployed, we need innovators, we need entrepreneurs, and together we can make it. All right, I'm about to finish. My, because most of the job has been done. You know, it's more like a repetition. Use of my funds. I want to know how, what you are using the funds that you are asking for. You know, you hear somebody, I want 30,000, I want 50,000 for, 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 for hardware. Hardware, what hardware do you want yet now? There's cloud, what, what, what? what, what hardware, what? What hardware is going to cost 50,000 that you want? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, so you find, so, so when I see that, I see that this person wants to use my money to fund, he wants me to fund his lifestyle before he starts making money. You want to, you want to wear the good jeans, you, are, you, you want to have the swag, you want to have the skeleto, you want to have the parties before you make the money, you eat what you kill. My money is not to fund your lifestyle, my money is to fund the business. So I want to I wanna see that my money is going into the business, not into you. I don't care whether they are coming to this thing wearing Nembe. As long as my money is going to the business, you will eat, you, you'll, work, you'll wear your suit like I'm doing right now when you make the money. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out here, it's no fire. No, 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 I'm just trying to. Because I, I was once like you, man. I was once like you. And I'm here to tell you that it's possible to make it in this nation. No matter what's going on, we can make it in this nation and we will still make it. But do you have the resolve? Do you have the mindset? Do you have the commitment? Do you have, do you have the thinking? Do you have, uh, you know, and, 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 and we want to just applause, you know, just thank you guys for organizing this. This is brilliant. This is what we need. This is exactly what we need. So, so, so I want to see whether you can... Because some people will say, we want salaries for the developer. Hey, 2,000. We want salaries for the CEO. We, uh, we'll be getting 5,000. You want my money to fund your salaries, yet there's nothing there. I want you to tell me that you can bootstring and say, you know what? All I want is money for Combi to come to work and, and lunch da, 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 until this thing funds itself. If you say like that, then we agree. I can't fund your salaries. Why should I fund your salaries when you're not making money? I am not the business. The business must fund salaries. My job is to fund the business, and the business will fund you. So I, so I want to see what you are paying yourself, and I will not use my money to pay you. So I want, you have to come with a level of commitment and sacrifice. I want to see your level of sacrifice. If you cannot sacrifice for your own idea, you want me.
to sacrifice for your idea. Yet you don't want to sacrifice for your own idea. Why did you think it in the first place? Hello? Am I talking? Say you are talking good funder. Come on, say it. Say, it. say you are talking good funder. Because you have never heard this. You know? Because you'll be, you'll be with your passes, guys. With your t-shirts. Team what what? Team Catholic. And say, oh no, my lady, judge at a meter. Ah, yeah. Apple. <laughs> Show me you're serious. You can work on a string budget. Let's make this thing work. When the money comes, you can eat all the money that you want. Okay. I think I switched it off. It's bad risk. Okay. All right. All right. The pitch. Man, where do we go? Ah, Potras, you must pay us more money. Amana, when we read those things, those things were depressing. Hey. Those, 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 you know, when we are reading, when we are reading those things. Some of it is just some people just just posted. You know how it is. It, there's no alignment. It's things are just posted and it's just ten words or, or fourteen words and there's no alignment. There's no topic. Would you hunt where the topic is? You you there's no there's no bolding of headings. There's nothing. You don't even know. It's like you are reading. You. I, I, I had to take some some pain stops. Almost got addicted. You know, it was, it was too much. You know, it was like as if you are reading a scroll from the Egyptians. Nothing, no chapters, just going and, say, and then somebody said, you want my money. The moment, I don't care how brilliant you are. If you are like that, you put me off. And guess what? If the founder is put off, your idea will not see the light of day. So you'll go into the mountains and start praying. I don't know, uh, there are tribal spirits. No, present well. What tribal spirits are there? There's no tribal spirit here. Just present well. So we want things that are polished. We want things that are neat. We want things that are labeled. We want things... Listen, if the English, we want it must be edited. Don't come with broken English. Uh, my, 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 my... My ICT innovation was that it was going to be enough for the rural uh, people and, uh, and uh, everybody else. And what are you saying? So you read. <laughs> what is this person saying? Arumbo All right, let's put it in Shona. Okay, let's put it in Shona. You know, it's better to say, Rim uh, then we get somebody to interpret it for us. But please, get it edited. Churungu, spellings. They are so dismal. And I will say, guys, you know, I'm starting to doubt whether they're the most literate people in, in Africa. After I read hundreds of those, I doubted those are, ah, I, I, I want that one to, to be reviewed. Ah! Angari Mawani! Ash! Yo! Be short. Be precise. I don't have all day. I've got 180 things to read. It has to make sense in a short space of time. When I started writing for the Herald, I write in the Herald as a contributor, and they said, look, you must write 500 words. And that's the space we are giving you. At first I said, are you out of your mind? And I had to change, you know, uh, scientific language. Medulla oblongata and all those kind of things into something that somebody will understand. I struggled. It took me three hours to just do one, one little 500 words. Now it takes me shorter because experience. So you have to learn how to squash things and still bring the point. If you cannot bring your point in, in, in short, you don't know what you are saying. If you cannot say it in a short space, then you don't know. If you need uh, 20, you need the whole world to tell us what you are doing, then you do not know what you are doing. And that's why we talk about pitching. 
that you must know how to pitch. I say you don't pitch with more than 10, 10 slides. The slides must not be the boss full of words, you know. You must then practice your, what you are doing. You must have a one-minute pitch like what the CEO said. I don't have time to listen to your stories. You have to tell me I've got only one and you've got one shot at meeting at me. I'm, I'm in meetings. I'm in strategic meetings. I'm, I'm on board meetings. I don't have time to babysit you. I don't have time to babysit you. In fact, let them repeat it. Say, I don't have time. <laughs> Come on, say, say, say it. This will help you. Say, I don't have time <laughs> to be babysitted. Okay, so you must learn how to pitch. So you must practice your one-minute pitch. You must practice your, your five-minute pitch. And if I've got time, ten minutes. Anything above that, you are boring and you don't know what you're saying. If you cannot say what you want to say in ten minutes or less, you do not know. So you need to go back on the drawing board. So you must practice. You practice with your aunt. You, if you don't have practice with your enemy, if you don't have practice with your dog, if you don't have everybody's got cockroach, practice with a cockroach. <laughs> practice. You practice. You practice. You think I, well, I'm doing what I'm doing because it's my first time to speak? Do you know how many times I speak and present? Do you know how many presentations I've done, PowerPoints I have done? I've done thousands of PowerPoints. You know how I got to do this? I was the only student in my class. So the lecturer said, Look, we are not going to lecture. You are going to lecture to us. So every lecture, I, pre I prepared a PowerPoint presentation and did the presentation. For four years when I was doing my master's, and by the time I finished, I was a master presenter. Practice makes perfect. Come on, you put your hands together for me. Ah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So, who am I again? I'm Dr. S.M. Teresa. I'm a business mentor. I run mentorship classes in Harare. If you are in part of that world, come visit us every last Friday. Thank you. Say wow. wow. I think, Doc, you, 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 sorry, Doc, sorry. You, you forgot also the issue of presentation to, of yourself. Look, look at him first. That I can talk about. We actually do grooming classes to um, entrepreneurs because people judge you by the way you look. Now, I know you, especially IT guys. Hey, Zugabek wears one shirt, da, da, da. You are not Zugabek. <laughs> you are not yet a billionaire. When you are a billionaire, even if you come naked, we will listen to you. <laughs> but before then, please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have to look the part. We, people will look at you and they are, and are, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? We, we need to see the seriousness. If you are Chris Ross, let the Chris Ross be nice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't come as if you are biting a cat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It doesn't mean you have to wear expensive things. You can even wear Zimbabwe. But make sure if it is, if it is Falala, it's now a, you know, a slim fit. You, you go to a tailor so that it fits, so that you are looking now. Say now. Ah. Uh. Dr. Chirisa is with uh, one of his team members, Rob. Rob, can you stand there? Look at the, it's not just him. Look at the guy, the gentleman from who works with Dr. Chirisa. And the, wow. <laughs> so it's, they, they talk, the, they walk the talk. So thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I want to appreciate all our speakers this morning. No Vuyo, uh, Mrs. Marikanda, and Dr. Chirisa. A round of applause for them. We appreciate you. And the value that you are giving us. In the afternoon, we come back, we've got more fire. But yeah. Mati? It dynamites. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Um, right now, we're going to go for a, sh a break um, and have some lunch. Oh, no. Actually, before the lunch, we want to ask questions. Because we actually, I'm looking at my watch and I'm thinking, why do I have extra time on my, on my clock? 
So, I'm going to ask um, Sandra to assist me with the microphone. And I'm going to ask Joseph to assist me with the questions so that at least you record them. And when uh, others are asking questions and, and the facilitators can then uh, work on the responses for us. So, by the way, we've got His Excellency here, the President of the Catholic University Students' Union. Where is he? Have you left? Has he left? There he is, His Excellency. We, we acknowledge your presence. Look at his shirt, face that direction. <laughs> he's, he, no, he's, 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 he's owning the part, isn't it, Doc? He's owning his position. How are you, Your Excellency? I'm fine, Mama. How are you? Where do you come from, and uh, which province, which, uh, who is your subbook, who is your chief? <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Uh, I come from Morewa, and I'm in East, and I'm Sabu Mangwen. Ah, it's the chief. It's Sabu, it's Muson. Thank you, Your Excellency. I don't know Nasty Kuna Pana His Excellency from Nast. Lupani, any his excellencies here. We want to we want to recognize you. Thank you. Uh, the the innovator at the back. How are you? Linja Ngapo. Next door. Next. Uh, uh, please stand, young uh, the innovator. Yes, Linja Nibab. Iyangi Chopel. Siabonga Linga Tala Pans. There is the innovator. Questions, questions, questions. Questions, value additions, clarifications, uh, corrections. We'll start here, go there, and then go there. First three questions. Then we'll take another three. Uh, just to repeat myself. Maybe, maybe you, you indicate who the question is directed to, yes. so that we go straight to that person. Uh, just to say it again, my name is Kensela, uh, CEO and founder of uh, Softit Consultant. Um, my, uh, I first want to uh, thank all the presenters. You have been uh, uh, wonderful. I really appreciate it, uh, everything you said. Uh, I want to just kind of sum up what you said, and uh, I'll point out my, my question out of there. Okay. You know, a a well-known uh, author said this. Uh, a very easy equation. You said you take gift, you add loves, mm -hmm. then you add skills, mm -hmm. you get talent. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, gift obviously is, uh, I, I mean, what you are born, born to with. do, what you, you can do naturally. Mm -hmm. Loves is what you love to do. Mm -hmm. And skills is uh, something you acquire. You are not born yes. with the skills, as we know. Mm -hmm. Now. I have with me here an extract of uh, Sunday Mail, dated 17th June of this year, mm -hmm. which says this, uh, critical skills deficit hampers growth. Mm -hmm. Then in this article, uh, those who publish this, yes. they acknowledge that uh, Zimbabwe is in lack of uh, something like uh, uh, 94, 96 percent lack of skills okay now here we are talking of innovation mm -hmm. and when you talk of ict innovation myself i see talent yes talent is the best word today everyone talks about talent yes now in software engineering i want to take ict narrow it to software engineering mm -hmm. because this is my field now we talk of gestation period mm -hmm. you know, which can take time to develop a workable software. Yes. I started myself working on my uh, ERPs and whatever. I can't tell you how long it took me. And I've gone with the mind just to uh, uh, join the, uh, the, 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 the motivator 
sorry sir uh, dr uh, chiriza yeah dr mm. chiriza mm. sorry mm. uh you know to say we have been uh, we just the way we grew up with with our business is uh, uh talking about uh organic growth you mm -hmm. know the money we make we we sponsor our business and we continue like that mm -hmm. like here we are talking first to put trust mm -hmm. you know finding software engineering project can be a huge challenge mm -hmm. because you tell me of 42 uh, months of repayment of a loan mm -hmm. you know for me i'll say forget it it mm -hmm. won't work in software engineering. Yes. But can we think of uh, other models to say, you know, go to a country like Israel. Mm -hmm. You find uh, this is a startup nation. Mm -hmm. You know, you find uh, uh, donors, you know, founders of projects. You know, they say, uh, because in Africa we are, uh, we are surrounded with this fear of uh, 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 failure, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Then, Israelites, they have the mindset of, uh, you, you know, they enjoy failure. You know, if you meet a founder, he will tell you, how many projects have you gone through? You say three, they'll be happy. Mm -hmm. You fail the three, then you have more chance to succeed on the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think uh, we have to change our mindset also. Mm -hmm. you know? Then on the ad, uh, uh, other side, the, the side of uh, uh, skills, mm -hmm. you know, this is a serious problem. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with, uh, I don't know, uh, hundreds of students from almost all universities in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. It is as serious as that, mm -hmm. you know. To find uh, a student or to find, uh, you know, when I recruit someone today, it might take him one year to mm -hmm. be able to do what my company wants to do in terms of software engineering. Mm -hmm. Then where are we going? Okay. You know? And yeah. it means portraits should think, even the government in general, not only finance innovation, yes. because skills is a problem. Mm. You give your money, which you will not see it back again. Yes. You know, I will myself discourage doing software engineering with loans. Mm -hmm. You know, it won't work for this company. Yes. Either give out free money, mm -hmm. either uh, help people, you know, to get like, skills. you know, mm -hmm. uh, develop business, uh, 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 opportunities. Mm -hmm. What I'll say, there is a gentleman who received, uh, uh, sorry, I might talk a lot, but excuse me. There is a gentleman who was uh, uh, attached to my com uh, company. You know, he received uh, a, an award from the president. Mm -hmm. I can't give you more details, but mm -hmm. I will be meeting him tomorrow. He's coming from Marare. Then I think financially he's quite prepared. Mm -hmm. Then he's coming back to our company to say, can we now sit down, go into partnership because he wants a software developed mm -hmm. for his business. Yeah. This is something which can work out good. There was a gentleman called here, Tafara. Mm -hmm. Tafara, mm -hmm. rather, he's gone out, mm -hmm. he's coming back. He mm -hmm. just had to meet his uh, a doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, he has a very brilliant uh, idea on a. Uh, I, I, yes, on uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he has ideas which can uh, really change a lot of things. Then here he comes to us. We have our own financial priorities and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then he has good ideas. Then I told him, this is not something we can do in six months, a year, and start seeing results. As the uh, uh, doctor said uh, so uh, so so well, you know, we have to come up with a prototype, and that will take time. Okay. And once we come up with something workable, we will not normally target local companies or whatever. You know, we want to tackle big players like uh, uh, Microsoft, Google to buy into these ideas. Yes. Yeah, this was just my... Uh, no, thank you so much. We appreciate. I think the, the point that is coming out is that uh, besides uh, investing in uh, the prototype developing certain products or services that improve uh, certain um, sectors or industries, in, we should also consider investing in um, software development, developing skills to do that. I think Mr. Marisa will talk into that, that those issues there, uh, when we then go to the responses. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, good day, everybody. I'm Hello. actually excited with the presentations. Yes. But um, I want to think Portras as an arm of government would want to work on these um, proposals mm -hmm. to give us a lot of success in them. Mm -hmm. But I thought uh, at one point we tend to 
appear like uh, we are Zimsec. Mm -hmm. Where we come in with uh, the proposals and mark them mm -hmm. and say, you have passed, you have failed. Mm -hmm. By so doing, I think we are uh, not doing good to the, to the nation. Mm -hmm. Because Portras should then say, out of the 188 proposals, mm -hmm. six did very well. Mm -hmm. A good initiative from these young innovators. Mm -hmm. And that's an initiative which is natural. Yes. Then there is, out of the 182 that are remaining, most probably 20 of them that are so good. Brilliant ideas. Mm -hmm. And I heard one of the presenters saying that. So we would then have an arm of these Portras again, which is an arm of government, to say, out of the 20 that are brilliant ideas, instead of simply saying uh, they were not well presented, the pitch was not well, mm -hmm. we need to work on them because we are supposed to be a team to mm -hmm. develop the nation and not to mark individuals. So mm -hmm. I think if we look into it towards that direction, mm -hmm. we would then have more and more of these young innovators coming up with the ideas mm -hmm. and we help them to develop them mm -hmm. into realistic and bankable ideas or yes. bankable proposals. I think... Um, <laughs> I think, I think that is Mr. Mjuru talking to that because there is something that we actually do to encourage. It's not like it's rejected and then thrown away. There's actually further engagement in terms of improving that particular proposal. But Mr. Mjuru talking to that. Um, I, didn't, I don't know you, say. Who are you and where, who is your chief? Which province do you come from? You sound very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My name is Ben Gono. Uh -huh. um, oh, I come good. from um, Gutu in Masingo. Uh -huh. The sobuk is uh, Chaminuka uh -huh. and Chief Chimombe. Ah, wonderful. And uh, I, I've been here for the past 40 years. Uh -huh. So in Bulawayo? Yes. So I wish I could have another soap book in Bulawayo. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> so we get the third, third um, question, and then we, we send back to those who, s who are supposed to respond whilst you, you, you gather other questions. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I've got a lot to say, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it in a compress it. Thank you. Um, you don't want to be the one standing between our stomachs and the lunch. Yes, yeah. very much. Uh, I've got observations and I've got suggestions. Okay. Uh, when I make the suggestions, I'm not saying that um, I'm the best, yeah. but I'm in the field. Yes. Um, and um, first of all, I, I would like to say I, I registered in the morning because I was doubtful uh, with government agencies. I usually think that you guys have a talent for underperforming. Portras is not But like uh, when uh, the lady from the Women's Bank made a presentation and mm. Dr. Cherisa, I was mm. now like, yeah, mm. these guys have, have done homework. So if you've got more people like that, then mm. uh, I think you're in the right direction. But I think that uh, for, some, for someone who's funding innovators, you're not being innovative. Okay. The first thing um, I would like to say is that evaluation mm -hmm. um, you want to harvest a lot of uh, ideas from innovators. Mm -hmm. You are missing the point that innovators will never think like a banker. Okay. So they are, gonna, they are going to have shortcomings every time. Mm -hmm. So your template has to make uh, a, 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 it has to cover that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, like I said, I write uh, proposals mm -hmm. for the European Commission. Yes. And uh, you'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. These are white people. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they outsource to us is mm -hmm. because even white people, mm -hmm. they cannot write, innovators, they mm -hmm. cannot write a proposal that will pass. Mm -hmm. And they know that. Okay. And they pay us in advance mm -hmm. huh, mm -hmm. to write that proposal, even if it does not get funding, but they know that what we have written mm -hmm. is going to be rated there. So I'll give you an example. They score project proposals out of 15. Okay. And for that proposal to get funding, it has to score 12.5 going upwards. Okay. This year, 
all proposals that were coming in, that were writing, were scoring 13 going upwards, which means even a, a proposal that got 12.5 mm -hmm. was failing to get funded. Okay. That's our job. Right. And for, to do that, the evaluators, they receive thousands. Mm -hmm. And then they say, look, we cannot read all of them. Okay. Because it will take time. Mm -hmm. So they say that uh, the, f the phase ones, for example, mm -hmm. we call them phase ones, yeah. You, re you write them in 10 pages. Okay. It has to fit pen 10 pages. Impact, problem solving, mm -hmm. business, business model, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. That's our job. That's our skill. We fit it into 10 pages. Uh -huh. And when, when I write a proposal, it will not be boring, I guarantee you. That's what I was trained to do. Okay. To fit it in 10 pages and it will have everything. That's fine, sir. Right. Okay. And then so the next point? The next point is... Um, Scaling up. Okay. This, uh, I don't know, um, I think that last time I read uh, the USA fund, mm -hmm. it was about, is it 40 million or something like that around there? I don't know. I seem to be corrected. Okay. I was expecting that by this time, mm -hmm. you would have scaled up with another, finding a partner, mm -hmm. so, let's say to bring it to 150 million or so. Okay. So that you can now do grant funding. You will never be able to do what you want to do by loans for innovators ever. There is no country. What you are saying, the countries that are leading in innovation, mm -hmm. they are not doing this by loans. Okay. They're doing grants. Okay. Even European Commission I'm talking about, they do grants okay. and then they do loans. All right. For when you're starting the phase ones, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So now, with, if you say you have 40 million, mm -hmm. I, I happen to know that there are grant funders who can partner with organizations like Portrans to okay. say you've got 40 million, mm -hmm. uh, you've got uh, this, uh, this strategy, mm -hmm. we, are bring, we can bring in 50 million to the table grant, mm -hmm. which you can now say to first time innovators on a phase one, we don't have, we are, we are bringing a prototype. Mm -hmm. eh? So okay. they develop it, say we are giving you a grant of 30,000. Okay. So that you develop your prototype and then next time you come to a phase two to, to scale it up to, to bring it to market. All right. I think he's, uh, so you're I'm noting. Uh -huh. All right. The third point. Um, then tech villages. Okay. Tech villages are, you see, uh, innovators, they work by, cross-pollination mm -hmm. and unfortunately uh, I know someone raised it mm -hmm. Zimbabwe we are always having this accusation and I, I know that government always gets around it mm -hmm. that innovators or someone with an idea will always accuse someone in government for stealing their idea it will always come out okay. why is it that the first world nation doesn't have it okay. because you guys are not addressing it okay. you need to address it so if you are going to say, like, right, um, right now the president is saying we want to be a middle income uh, economy by 2030. Yes. For that you need to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You need to be a, a very skilled ICT country. Yes. Like Estonia, for example, yes. that came up. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so now tech villages are the thing. Okay. And for them to happen, I, I've seen some guys from tech villages here. Mm -hmm. I know it's not, you, it's not your role mm -hmm. to babysit them. Mm -hmm. But look, technically you're working with them. So why don't you fund legal help? Okay. Get lawyers that okay. are funded by Portras. Okay. That, that, that a, an innovator doesn't have to pay. Because you know, you understand how much a lawyer charges. Mm -hmm. Yet you, have, you want their, the innovator's ideas, but they are afraid. And every innovator I talk to is always afraid to say, if I bring my idea, mm -hmm. someone is going to steal it in government. So it's protection of their... Yes. Uh, so we'll think about, about that. We'll talk about that in the afternoon because there's expert in that area. Maybe it's a bit of a handful. Um, so I'll allow comments from uh, Mr. Marisa, Mr. Mjuru, and any other, the in, um, I think the presenters as well. Thank you. Um, and thank you for the questions. But let me first of all thank the presenters, all the three presenters. You were very brilliant, really. Um, and I think for me, this is an eye opener uh, in terms of um, what we are trying to achieve. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, what you just got here, people pay thousands of dollars to get this kind of training. People pay a lot of money to get this kind of training. 
but we are trying to uh, make it available. Um, I think nobody charged you for this. Um, and uh, I think Sibo is going to provide free lunch again. Um, why are we doing this? It's in a small way, as Potras. We are trying to address a gap that is there. Um, Sir Monsu, um, thank you very much. You, I think from DRC you'd, or from Congo, you would speak French. Um, the little French that I, I don't want to hazard going into there. The, the issue that you raised, certainly as Potras, we, we cannot claim that we are doing everything that has to be done with regards to the issue of innovation. Um, as alluded to earlier on, this was a brainchild of our ministry, and they identified that, yes, we do have initiatives that are scattered all over government to address the issue of innovation. Um, but from an ICT perspective, we can do a little that we can to contribute towards that, those efforts. So definitely we cannot claim that as Potras here, we are doing everything that has to be done with regards to the issue of innovation. I think in my remarks, I alluded to the fact that as we started, the idea was that we are looking at loans, basically, um, giving out loans to uh, eligible uh, proposals. But now we are looking at the possibility of funding even the prototypes as well. If you got me in my opening remarks, that's what I said. Uh, because of this realization that we see that there are certain good ideas. And I think Dr. Chirisa alluded to that, that yes, there are certain good ideas that we can see. And it is part of the panel that, that does our evaluation. Very good ideas that needs to be developed into a prototype. And we have said that we need to help such so that they can develop a prototype. Um, but when it comes to the issue of uh, perhaps software engineering and so forth, where you may not really do that uh, through funding of the type that we are doing. And we, we are in agreement because that was never the intention of what we are doing. What we are doing is to try to just help out um, in the efforts of commercializing certain very good ideas that are propagated, um, we will never be able to fill the gap. We don't have all the money. Um, it's a very, it's a small purse that is there. Um, the need is great, but we have to do something. So if anybody has to qualify, they really have to be outstanding. Um, so with regards to, 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 to what you were talking about, that's a national effort, a nation, which requires a national uh, policy uh, to address that, to say as a country, as Zimbabwe, uh, if we are going to be, say, a middle income or upper middle income economy by 2030, what efforts are we going to do? To, to, to deal with in, in order to get there. So, fair enough. Um, just perhaps to touch a bit again on what uh, Mr. Mr. Gono is it um, talked about. Um, the, the efforts that we are making, and again, may perhaps Mr. Mjuru may want to, 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 to augment my, 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 my comments. Uh, it's not per se the marking that you may look as yes, in terms of, it might sound like that, but it's not like that. Because we are simply not just dismissing um, uh, those that don't make the cut to say, I oh, know this is, yes, there are certain of those proposals that are totally, totally, uh, someone has to really just start afresh. Um, but there are certain proposals that you can see that there is a good idea, as I said. And we've said, yes, they have not managed to get them the funding, but how else can we help them out? 
which is why, again, we are having these kind of workshops. It's that realization that we are seeing that, yes, there is a huge failure rate. Some of it is because people need to be trained. And we are offering and affording people this opportunity to train people to say, how do you do it so that you are successful next time? So we are not simply just dismissing it and say, ah, well, you have failed, so that's your own problem. We, we are doing something about it to try and help out. Um, and the ideas, by the way, it's not just for us to say, we don't make money out of it. That's why the interest rates are very low. We don't make money out of it. But we have said, if you are, if you are going to get that money for free as a grant, perhaps you may not make much effort to try and get it um, successful. So you have to get it as a loan and pay back. And that will push you to make sure that whatever idea you come up with is viable, is, uh, can be commercialized. Um, I think uh, I will leave uh, the time for, for okay. others. I think there are issues that were raised. I think you were co you co you've covered them. There are the issues of uh, uh, the caliber of proposals that uh, are being made and then also the fact that the template is a bit more complicated and needs to be uh, specific to maybe shorter than what it is? Yes. Um, again... Um, and bringing it down to the level of the people who are applying to, for, for the funding. Well, I don't know if we can, um, we can uh, like reduce the, the standard as it were. We, we can't do that. All we can do is to try to capacitate, as we are doing, those who want to apply for funding so that they know how to do it properly. By the way, we are working with banks in disbursing these funds. And banks have got certain standards, minimum standards they expect. So we are not just doing it as portraits to say, you come in and we give, we give you the money. We are doing it through banks. And we have to meet certain minimum standards. Uh, we can't just say, oh, well, we reduce the standards so that uh, as many people can access. We, 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 yeah. Okay. The process. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Well, oh, that's, okay. that's, that's yeah. good. I well, well and good. Yeah. I think from mm. the presentation, I think that was made, um, you saw that there was the issue of coming out with a, an executive summary. And if the executive summary has been done properly, it must just tell, I think that's really the pitch. It must tell whether this is something that you should either look at or it's a waste of time going through. So uh, again, um, we have to improve. I, I, I'm not saying that what we are saying, we are going, well, what we are doing now is the, the best there is. We can improve in terms of our templates and so forth. Um, but also the, the training that we are offering is to say those who are going to make presentations, they must do their pitch they must do their executive summary. And you may then attach the bulky document, so be it. But if the executive summary is, is right, it must tell the whole story. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mjuru. You want to comment uh, before we take more questions? Uh, thank you, um, Sibon. Um, so thank you very much uh, to, to, to all the speakers for, for, for the questions. Um, maybe let me start by addressing the issue of um, technology hubs and, um, and, and tech villages. I think in his, uh, in his um, welcoming remarks, uh, Mr. Marisa alluded to the fact that uh, we're currently working on a, a, a plan to start... Um, uh, doing things like hackathons and uh, also assisting technology hubs. 
because we realize that um, um, getting uh, certain um, 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 profession, professions to assist uh, the innovators is not easy because uh, of the, the, the cost of it. But if we support innovation hubs and, uh, and tech villages, it is possible that we, we, we can assemble a number of professionals to work with uh, the, the innovators at, at, at affordable rates. So that's an area that we, we are working on. And we're also looking at, at hackathons where we will be able to, to provide seed capital um, in the form of grants to, to innovators, which they don't have to pay back. So th those are things that we, we, are, we are working on. But we, we also need to, 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 to respond to, to the issue of the failed um, applications. And the way we are doing that, uh, it's, uh, it's like we're not just saying you, you have failed and uh, that that's where it ends. But we, we're actually um, highlighting the areas where the, the proposal failed uh, uh, to, 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 to come out properly and um, allow the innovators time to, 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 to work on those areas and resubmit the proposal. So we are, we are not closing to say, ah, you have submitted and that's it, you have failed. Some have um, uh, uh, presented their proposals more than once yeah. and they are still failing. But we are not saying, ah, no, you have done it twice, you, you should stop here. We are encouraging them to, to resubmit again. Yeah. You see, so, 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 okay. so, I, yeah. I think that's I what think, I can yeah. say for now. Yeah, I think um, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the issue really that we are not really just, we are not rejecting people completely. And I think the issue of um, mentors, uh, people like Dr. Chirisa who are coming in to take up uh, some innovators and hold their hand and support them in terms of, uh, you know, polishing up um, their proposals to make them you know, to the standard at which they're expected. So it's, it's, I think it's things that were not presented on the presentations, but there's a lot that is actually being done in terms of supporting young people, because we do know that they are not as skilled as um, most business people in terms of writing these proposals, but they need that assistance in terms of supporting. And then some of them, we actually point them to uh, people who can assist them. Uh, with uh, proposals, even some innovators who are who is funded, who are assisted by other people, we are also connecting other innovators to those, um, so that they can be assisted as well. Yeah, so, I, can I have? I, I may just add uh, one other thing that um, in its uh, present uh, state, our application form is, uh, is is five pages. Yeah. Um, it's actually an improvement to what we had last time. Last time we didn't have any application form and uh, the proposals came in any format mm -hmm. and it was very difficult for us to go through those proposals. Mm -hmm. That's why we then developed this uh, application form. But we are not saying this is final. There is still room for improvement and we will continue to work on it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Maybe just uh, advise uh, everybody the website. Oh, okay, for, for those who would want to submit proposals, the website uh, is uh, www.innovationdrive.gov.zw. And there you can download the application form and uh, it will lead you through the areas that are required. And you can then submit um, at um, uh, innovationdrive at potras.gov.zw. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sandra will have a question there. I'll take three more questions. Um, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and then we'll stop there. And then we, I think we'll then see if we can, we can take more or we can take more after lunch because I know people are a bit hungry. They want to eat and then come back for questions and more presentations. Thank yes. you, ma'am. Oh. Um, I'm Sarah Bitota from Softit Consultant. And mine is very simple. Uh, we've been uh, given some statistics, <coughs> excuse me, some statistics on um, the responses that you got and all those uh, uh, ranges that you put there. But can we have also a listing of uh, the six proposals that were, retain <coughs> that were retained? And um, also what you are doing, this is my second question, what you are doing with regard to your monitoring 
of those projects. Are you following them up to see that? Okay, so the, the first the question, yeah. the first question, Joseph, is: uh, um, Can we have the statistics of the other, the six? The listing. The listing. We want to have six. the description of the projects that okay. succeeded. Yeah. On the magazine that you were given, they're in there. Oh. Even on the cover, it's oh. one of them. So they're in the magazine. Okay. You can get the, like a previous, a, 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 like a small, short description of what the, the innovators are. All the six are in there. Okay. And then I think Mr. Mujuru will then talk, in, talk to um, Your, monitoring, yes. how we are monitoring yes. in terms of displacements. The next one I think you wanted to ask, he wanted to ask a question. Hello, everybody. Or protocol observed. Sorry, I was uh, late for the introductions. My name is Richard Chikea. I am a director for Data King Private Limited. We are based in Blawayo. I come from Headlands, that's the village of origin. Uh -huh. I'm a Parura chief, and uh, my sobuk is uh, Miranda. Um, I'm excited to be here. I would like to thank the organizers for organizing such an event, especially in Blawayo. We have always felt marginalized and um, a special, um, I, let's just give a clip of hands for mm, them. Nice. They've done a good job. My time. Uh, nonetheless, that was also meant to um, make me relax a bit. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> what I would like to say about Bulawayo, before I give the question, is that Bulawayo is the city of kings and queens. And in this city, I think if we're to look at innovativeness, it all starts in Bulawayo. Even in Chacha, they go down south, but they start in Bulawayo. Technology, Chacha University Technology, Aritangamuno. What I would like to say is, Potras, you have got such a brilliant idea. Where have you been? <laughs> right. Mr. Mberi is our associate. He spoke earlier on Tapali Technologies. Mm -hmm. He's into networking. Data King is a hardware company. We have been in this business for a long time. I trained as a lithographer. I changed trades like what the doctor said. I moved and I am a self-taught IT person. Mm -hmm. We are trying to set up a manufacturing plant or assembly for Blawayo. Yes. Most of the people that are in Blawayo here, they are my grandchildren, some of them. Okay. We basically train, we um, uh, equip them, and some of them, they have got um, their own businesses running now, but we have got a, a, an origin somewhere. Right. What I wanted to say is um, to the CEO, Baba Marisa, to tender, and I think uh, keep Blawayo on focus, because there are great things that are going to come from here. Um, my Miss Bobo is um, our representative of Nast. I'm excited by your presentation. Mm. What I note, though, is if uh, Baba Marisa could actually create a department, Bulawayo region, southern region, that before these proposals go to Potras, mm. you see, we've got a university with educated people. They sift through them, mm. hand them at back to grassroots level before they go up. Mm -hmm. And then, like my uh, father said, the time frame for IT, mm. 40 months is too little. Mm -hmm. My first um, presentation at Trade Fairs at ITF was in 2006, the other one in 2009. Mm -hmm. We gave this city its first mobile van. Mm -hmm. It's there, the prototype. It lagged funding, it fell apart. We went on, we even gave the first college, its, its first computer. Currently, we're working on projects that are going to put us on the light if we are funding. Okay. But this funding, according to doctor, if you are going to give me money in the last five minutes, sorry, I'm exceeding. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you are. <laughs> if you're going to give me funding, I think the other thing is, not, don't look at me. Mm. Look at where I've come from. Feel a bit sorry that the economy that we are in has not been given as an, uh, as an advantage. Mm. And maybe look at those things based on what Miss Bobo does with her team on site. Mm -hmm. Because if we wait for Harare things, uh, maybe through decentralization, things would be a bit better. Yes. I would like to appreciate that. Okay. Then Kuna... Um, uh, tech Villages. Mm -hmm. Data King has said this thing that we network. I think even Facebook, when it came first, we were there in a little way. We tried the, uh, through different companies. Networking, it's very important. But what I've noticed is we 
all of us are not focused enough on that. If we make these tech villages a reality, in Blawa you've got computer village, this is all a cluster of people doing IT, but we can do more, a lot more. Mm. We've got all the minds that are here. Mm. Please take that initiative, take villages and the, um, and the technology hubs. We've got everything. I would like to see Blawayo becoming a technology hub where we export experts. Thank you. Through our university. Yeah, thank then you. my last point mm. is, why is Econet not here? I'm not seeing their banners. Potras is not a competitor here. Econet, Econet are you here? They are not here. Okay. I feel very let down because my next point is to do with that. Okay. Potras is not a competitor to Tapali Technologies or to Econet, but they are an enabler. Mm -hmm. I think Econet and uh, Potras need to sit down because all, most of these points that have come through, Econet is already addressing them. And when Strive Masiwa meets with Bill Gates and uh, Richard Branson, these are billionaires on, mm -hmm. the, on this earth. Mm -hmm. Don't you think they will just say, can you give us a grand of five billion? Then we see what our startups will do in Bulawayo. Let's think beyond our mm -hmm. borders. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very um, much. I must comment on, on the issue of the service providers. The innovation drive is a collection of funding that comes from all operators. So Econet is included. Liquid, which is an Econet group of companies, company is also contributing. So all these ones, Tel One, Net One, Zimpost, everyone is required to, to uh, contribute a percentage uh, to the fund. So they are, are actually part of it. And then I don't know, maybe they might have missed the dates because we have two. We, we started in Bulawayo, but we're going to go to Harare. Then maybe I also want to address the issue of starting in, in Bulawayo. The first, you know, when we first started the innovation drive, Tech Village, where are you? They will tell you, we worked with Tech Village. To, do the f to actually start working on this innovation drive. Takunda Chingonzo and his team, they assist us, uh, assisted us so much with actually working on, uh, on the innovation drive, uh, the proposals, the, the first um, innovation drive showcase that we had. Here in Blawa, it was done here in, in Blawa, then it was replicated in Harare. And this workshop is starting here in Blawa on the 16th of October to be in Harare. So I think we, we are trying as much as possible to put Harare, and also I'm from Blawa, I'm from Mat Matebele land. So I also try to push them, Jurus and everybody, let's start in Blawa first before we can go. But we've been trying so much to make sure that we include both the southern and the northern region, um, you know, people to, to be part of this process. Um, sir? Okay. Okay. Yes, so, sir, first. Yes, th thank you very much. Uh, I would like to, you know, applaud um, Potters once again for organizing, you know, this uh, workshop. Uh, I want to, I have maybe three comments. I'll try to be very brief. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is uh, Alec Nguri again. I'm from NAST. Mm -hmm. And I'm from a department called the Technopark. Mm -hmm. We are the ones who gave birth to Tech Village. They, Takunda uh, Chingonzo. Mm -hmm. was our student and we were incubating him yes. before he graduated and then went out to make tech village out yeah. there yes uh, we are proud of what he has done mm -hmm. uh, what i want to say is i applaud um, what mrs marikanda said about the issue of uh, Benkepo projects. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of you know excitement which comes up mm -hmm. when somebody comes up with something, and some people are seeing it. They think this thing is new. This thing is mm -hmm. new. But from our experiences, that you know most of these things are probably not new. Yes. And then when you ask these innovators to really explain what they have come up with, mm -hmm. then you discover that sometimes they totally fail. Mm -hmm. to really, you know, market the thing. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, as bankers, like what Mrs. Marikanda said, mm -hmm. I think it puts them in a very difficult, yes. you know, position because yeah. probably some of those things will even be infringing some intellectual property rights out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So they have to do that due diligence to make sure they, they avoid such, you know, occurrences. Mm -hmm. But on the way forward, as NAST, as we are aware, we are one of the universities which is having an innovation hub under construction. Mm -hmm. We were looking at, you know, probably it was going to be launched during our next, our graduation next month. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can still, you know, catch that deadline mm -hmm. and then get it launched. We want to, you know, really even partner with Potters mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, providing a space 
for ICT innovators yes. to come and work uh, with us at the NAST Innovation Hub, yes. which is the, which we are going to open soon. So really, Thank I you. like it that you brought the bankers mm -hmm. who brought the financial perspective. Mm -hmm to these innovations. Yes, I was you. impressed by what Dr. Chirisa said. Mm -hmm. I think most of our innovators, they are not uh, trained entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you discover that, you know, some people might be good in coming up with some innovations, but mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to probably, you know, going the entrepreneurial side, mm -hmm. they fail. Yes. And they fail dismally with their ideas. Mm -hmm. And these people were afraid of saying somebody will steal a, a, my idea. Everyone has got ideas. Yes. So how do you claim that I stole your idea? Mm -hmm. Because we have heard people coming to us saying, ah, so and so. We had an example, somebody saying, this smart home concept, which Econet is using. Mm -hmm. It was my idea, it was my idea. But we mm -hmm. said, you don't have a monopoly over ideas. Mm -hmm. Anyone can be thinking like what you're thinking, mm -hmm. but it now depends on what next step you take. Yes. Do you have a prototype? Have you really tested what you say is your, you know, idea? That's mm -hmm. why it matters. No wonder why you heard the Dr. Chirisa say, if you come with an idea, mm -hmm. already as somebody with his venture capital, mm -hmm. he can say he owns 90%. Mm -hmm. Because you've just come with it, but he has got the money to make it into reality. Thank so you. I think he, that's important for our innovators to know. I don't Thank want you. to, you know, preempt what my colleagues are going to, you, you know, talk about in yes. terms of IP protection. Yes. So let's, let's wait for the afternoon so that we can then mm -hmm. further discuss that issue. Yes. Thank I think you. also maybe just to note that... Uh, Technopark, we also, they were also, I think uh, you might not have been there that time, but we worked with them as well when we started the innovation drive. And then uh, I think Miss Bobo will confirm that Potras has sponsored several um, uh, innovation uh, activities that NAST actually does. It's a proper sponsorship which is, does not require any return, but uh, really to support innovations. Um, and think the gentleman, the, it was, this was just a comment. And then I think that was also a comment. Uh, sir, and then say at the back. A very good afternoon. Uh, it's Chris Mberi again. Yes. Uh, mine is a two-part question. Uh, the first one is to do with uh, information dissemination by portras. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it a little bit lacking. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask what is happening with uh, a project I once saw, I think they were trying to put in internet cafes or information centers in mm. different places, yes. which is a project that seems uh, stagnated. Mm. I would feel this would be a very good um, a project mm -hmm. to disseminate such information to people. Mm -hmm. uh, as I see it, 188 uh, project presented in a country of uh, 12 million mm -hmm. uh, goes to show that people are not getting this information. Okay. Right. My other question is to do with infrastructure. Uh, at some point, uh, Potras uh, was, or was it the Minister of Information, but uh, obviously in conjunction with Potras, yes. there was a push for infrastructure sharing, mm -hmm. which I would like to find out how far it has gone, because for most innovators, it is very important to have um, uh, access to infrastructure in a legal frame framework. Uh, coupled to that, something a bit more specific is uh, internet exchange hubs. We currently have one in Zimbabwe, which is sitting in, in Harare, and the only reason most of our internet is very expensive is that we are all accessing it, first going outside the country and then come back for content that can be within Zimbabwe. Okay. What is Portress doing about it mm -hmm. in terms of uh, that. putting these ones live? Okay. Thank you. So um, thank you so much. Is the issue of the information centers, what, how far we've gone, the issue of uh, the internet exchange point, and then the issue of infrastructure sharing. Um, Mr. Maurice. Thank you. Um, well, I think we are a bit digressing, aren't we? <laughs> Although it's still relevant, it's important. But um, maybe in short, um, the issue of the IX, IX, the National Internet ex Exchange Point is working um, and it's in the process of being developed into a regional Internet Exchange Point. Um, so we can confirm that I think um, 
all the major um, IAPs um, actually are using it at the moment or peering using that um, internet exchange point. Um, the issue of community information centers, um, well, we don't call them internet cafes per se uh, because we offer a lot more. Uh, we also offer training um, and other uh, services there. This is a pro pro program that is going on. Uh, we haven't stopped. Um, we were affected slightly, or well, in a big way, um, by the problems that are affecting everyone in terms of equipping those centers as we needed to, um, our suppliers needed to import the computers and other related equipment. Um, our suppliers have been struggling to supply the numbers that we needed to, um, to, to, to actually equip all the centers. So uh, everything else is ready. Uh, what's left is really the computers to equip uh, some of the centers. But we are making progress uh, step by step uh, in terms of equipping them uh, using the, well, whatever computers we can access in the local market, um, which is not much, but uh, we, we are doing the best we can with those constraints that I talked about. The issue of in infrastructure sharing, um, it's um, a legal framework that was put in place. And uh, I think if there is any problem, I think the concerned parties should simply resort to the remedies that are provided for in the, in the, in the, in the regulations. So if you approach um, your Econet or Net1 or Tel1 and you want to share in their infrastructure and they are not willing and they, and they don't provide you with a reasonable excuse why the sharing can't be done, you can resort then to the provisions of the law. Uh, so I think the, the issue is not to say that um, um, they, there is a framework where if there are three base stations or three, three towers, you then have to demolish the other two and you remain with one. I don't think that was the idea. So the towers might still be there, uh, but what we are saying is perhaps where there is new development, where there are new towers being erected, we expect that whoever is doing it must provide sufficient capacity to carry, to, to carry everyone else um, in accordance with the law that is in place now. Thank you so much uh, for that clarity. The last, I, I would want to hear from this section, the last two questions. We need to go to lunch. Oh, there's one day, then we'll go to you. You'll be the last person to ask. Um. Good afternoon. My name is uh, Wela Choko. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a startup. And then um, there are some challenges that we face uh, as uh, startups. So this question is addressed to uh, Portres, uh, Mr. A. Marisa, and also to telecommunications provider. Um, at times, as startups, we don't just look for funding, but we also look for um, assistance from, from the players. For example, like for Portres, um, it's difficult for small uh, uh, startups to, to get a license from Portres. And I was wondering if, if you could make the process easier for us to get a license, especially on the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz spectrum. In other countries, it's, uh, there's no licensing for it. They can use it. And I believe if they can um, give us access to those um, frequencies, we can, startups can actually improve. Uh, the second one is for uh, telecommunications um, providers. Um, usually, with most telecommunications providers, they don't um, they don't they don't offer um, um, assistance to to startups. Um, for example, integrating to their APIs is very difficult for a startup to get uh, integration to any of the big players' uh, APIs. And also, um, as startups, also. Right now, if you see in our country, the, the setup is that there's WhatsApp bundles. And most people, when they get uh, money, 
they want to um, get bundles. So I was, I was wondering if there was a way of maybe promoting startups whereby startups don't need, um, people don't need airtime to actually access uh, uh, apps from startups. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, you're done? Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, we, we are no longer going to hear from the lady because she says you've asked the questions you wanted to ask. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Marisa to talk about, um, the, to respond to your questions. Thank you. Um, I think with, with respect to licensing of startups, um, and in particular to the use of the ISM bands, uh, that's what you referred to, the 2.4 and uh, 5, I think, um, gigahertz band. Um, and ISM standing for Industrial, Scientific, and Medical. In, in Zimbabwe at the moment, it's not a licensed band. So there are guidelines in terms of how you can use that band. What it is is that it's not protected. So you can use it. Um, obviously, you have to come through Potras and you, um, you, you, you get the guidelines on how you can use it. Um, but then you are not protected if there is interference in what you are doing. Uh, we don't offer you protection the same as those that are using the other commercial bands. Um, so I think that's, that's what I can say. It's not that there is no framework at all in terms of licensing. All there is is that we are not, uh, you don't pay a license fee to use that band at the moment. Um, but there are guidelines that are there in terms of how you can use that, uh, that band. Um, perhaps you can um, engage with the Anamista Mjuru further um, and they can perhaps uh, provide you with more guidelines. It's not like it's prohibited to use it, um, but we also say that if you are going to offer a service for resale and using that band, it becomes problematic because we don't provide protection if um, then there is interference and your customers start complaining when we don't provide protection, then we have a, an issue there. Um, so if it is for industrial research and so forth, where you are not using it for commercial purposes, I think it should be possible to use it. Um, that's what I can say there. Um, in, I, I don't think there is anything else was there. Ah, uh, now um, I think uh, anything for free is, 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 is problematic, isn't it? Um, because I, I think with respect to the way we're doing our, um, uh, we call it tariff regulation, you, you cannot get it for free. Someone has to pay. So perhaps if you are talking about Potras, perhaps sponsoring or funding that, and that, that's a different matter altogether, which perhaps it can be looked at as part of the budget uh, for, for research and development or as part of the innovation drive budget. Uh, that can be looked at differently. Uh, but when you are looking at uh, accessing it for free, you are simply saying that uh, you want free data. Is that what you are saying? Um, you want to clarify. I see. Um, I don't know, Amjuru, you want to to address that? Or oh, it's something that we can have uh, an aside with uh, the gentleman? Because, um, but like, like I said, wherever there is, people use data to access perhaps your, your, your app and so forth. And 
I, I'm trying to think of the mechanism of doing that. Someone has to fund something. And if someone has to fund something, it can only be perhaps Potras in this case. It can be the carrier because they will not offer you free services. Um, so I, I think those are kind of mechanisms that perhaps can be looked at separately. I don't know, uh, perhaps Sam Juru can augment my, my comment. Uh, thank you. I think it goes back to the issue of uh, strategic partnerships that um, I talked about earlier on. We, um, most of the innovators, they, they are trying to do everything on their own. But if you then partner with um, those network operators, of course they'll get something out of it, but uh, you'll also get something out of it, rather than uh, having your, 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 your innovation dying. That's how I would, I would, uh, I would address it. So it's, it's a matter of uh, talking to the uh, network operators and uh, agreeing to work together. But I also want to address another question that I think was not uh, answered on um, how we are monitoring uh, the projects that are being funded. On, uh, on this one, um, we, we are doing it through milestones. So we agree on a set of milestones with, uh, with the innovator right at the beginning. And um, any release of funds beyond the first um, milestone, uh, we then do a review of all the previous milestones, um, what was the performance on those milestones. If we are happy, we release um, subsequent funds. But if we are not happy, we, we may decide to end up there. So that's, that's how we are doing it in terms of monitoring. And it's being done on a, on a monthly basis, but of course, uh, because of uh, resource constraints, at, at times we fail to do it on a monthly basis, but we, we try by all means to do it regularly. So basically, that's how we are doing it. Thank you. All right, uh, just to add on to what Mr. Marisa was saying on the ISM bands, uh, if you're getting, using those frequencies, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, those frequencies are not protected as they are unlicensed. So if you are doing a business using those bands, you are subject to facing interference at some point, and this may affect your business in the long run. So it's best to use licensed frequencies. Well, thank you. Uh, I think we need a break. You'd agree with me? Yes. Uh, we will take a break. Uh, now it's, um, it's half past one. So we will go for lunch. When we come back, we go into the protection of intellectual property session where we're going to have uh, Dr. Sabola and uh, Aram Lambo who are going to take us through uh, the intellectual property session. So I'll ask um, Sandra to, to take our, our, our presenters uh, and our operators down uh, to the left, to the right, and then we will go to the left again, but using this door, because I understand that there's another group that's already there. Okay, all right. So... Thank you so much. We'll meet again here at uh, quarter past two. Thank you. It is safe for you to leave your gadgets, right? Yes, they are right here. You can leave your laptops and everything. Thank you. <laughs>